The title of this video was not clickbait. There is a way, and it's a legal way, that if you own MLPs, you can never ever have to pay taxes on them, which means you could pass up to $11.2 million onto your kids or a family member, and they'd never have to pay taxes either. This is an article from Simply Safe Dividends. I'm not a tax advisor, I'm not a financial advisor, so obviously consult your tax professionals and do your own research. If you never sell your units, meaning you never actually sell the shares that you own, then when you pass on and your heirs inherit them, the cost basis will be adjusted up to the stock price on the day of your death. That means that you and your family could potentially permanently defer taxes up to 5.6 million per individual or 11.2 million per couple. This is the most you could pass on to your heirs before the estate tax kicks in. In other words, if you spend decades buying and holding quality MLPs such as Enterprise Product Partners or Magellan Midstream Partners, then you could potentially avoid a mountain of taxes and leave your heirs with large and income producing inheritances. This whole video, I'm gonna talk about the five MLPs that I'm gonna be adding to my portfolio. At the end of the video, I'll show you my whole portfolio like I always do and I'll show you how I'm adding them and how I'm gonna adjust the allocations or the percentages of stocks that I own to include these MLPs. The first part of this video is gonna be about why, and I'm gonna share that list of five MLPs that's based off of actually recommendations from Simply Safe Dividend. First, we're gonna cover kind of the this guide to investing in MLPs that Simply Safe Dividends provides. It's absolutely free, so you can look it up, Simply Safe Dividends, Google it, and, and you'll find the guide. One thing to note that MLPs are inappropriate investments for retirement accounts. If you own an MLP in a retirement account, you could actually owe tax on your investment. There's more links here, so do some research on that, but just wanted to put that disclaimer out there. So what is an MLP? It is a master limited partnership. They've become super popular in this age of low interest rates because they've been a way that you could earn you know, a high dividend in a low interest rate environment, which is what a lot of people are looking for. But they're different than investing in a normal stock or even a normal dividend stock, and so that's what this guide talks about. This is why MLPs are able to pay you know, such high dividends, and sometimes they can be pretty stable if you're looking for the right companies that have the right metrics. They generally operate in the oil and gas sector, particularly in the midstream space. Midstream MLPs are those that specialize in the gathering, storage, processing, and transportation of oil, gas, and refined petrochemicals. Midstream MLPs generally derive most of their cash flow from long-term fixed fee contracts, which makes the cash flow less volatile than that of regular oil and gas companies who are at the mercy of cyclical commodity prices. So that's why they're somewhat immune to kind of like the commodity cycle, right? Okay, so this gets into how the way they pay their dividends and how the taxation works. MLPs are a special type of company known as pass-through entities, which means that the partnership doesn't pay corporate taxes because it passes through its cash flow and tax obligations to unit holders. There are several other differences between MLPs and C-Cores. Because MLPs pass on the majority of cash flow as distributions, they retain very little earnings, which makes it hard for them to fund growth investments like the construction of new pipelines. And so what they do is they use a majority of their cash to fund a very generous dividend that attracts investors, and then they fund growth through external debt and equity issuances. Now, the difference between distributions, which is what MLPs pay, and dividends. Unlike C-Corps that pay dividends, MLPs pay a special kind of dividend known as a distribution. Biggest difference is how they're taxed. A dividend is paid out of a corporation's free cash flow is usually considered qualified, which means it's taxed at the same rate as long-term capital gains. That was regular dividend stocks like your Costco's, your Lowe's, your Pepsi's, your Cokes of the world. MLPs, because of the special tax status, pay distributions, which are a tax deferred dividend. The reason for this is because MLPs don't just pass on its cash flow in the form of payouts, but also its tax obligations. Because remember, they don't pay corporate taxes. Because of the highly capital intensive nature of the industry, the amount of depreciation and amortization that MLPs generate is enormous. Now, I know this is wordy, but just stick with me, okay? It's important to understand this stuff before you dive into MLPs. So as a result of that non-cash depreciation and amortization charges, their gap earnings are artificially suppressed and distributions of paid are usually higher than their earnings. So the IRS considers a majority of an MLP's distribution a return of cap. Unlike qualified dividends, which are taxed at 0, 15, or 20% rates, ROC isn't taxed, at least not right away because the IRS considers any ROC portion of a distribution to be the equivalent of an MLP simply returning capital to investors and thus not truly income or capital gains. Now there is a special tax form. So again, do some research here, but it says that uh, if you use TurboTax, th this form makes it easy to do in, in no more than 10 minutes, but again, do your own research. 
So the ROC portion of a distribution is outlined in the annual K-1 form that all MLPs send you at tax time. So you'll get that from the MLP that you own in your brokerage. As you can see in the example below, this form can significantly increase complexity at tax time. Okay, here's what happens. That ROC portion of a distribution, rather than being taxed right away, so you don't pay taxes when you get that eight or 10% dividend, instead it decreases your cost basis, potentially all the way to zero. At that point, distributions are taxed as long-term capital gains, just like qualified dividends. When you sell an MLP, then the government will recoup those deferred taxes because your capital gain will be larger by the amount of your cumulative return of capital. For example, if you paid $10 per share for your units and received $3 per share in distributions that are capital classified as a return of capital, your new cost basis is seven rather than 10. Remember, 10 minus the three you received, your new cost basis is seven. Then if you sell your shares at 12, your gain would be $5 per share. The $12 share price minus the $7 adjusted cost basis, which captures the ROC distributions that you received but weren't taxed on. And this is where it gets into what I shared where uh, they provide the potential tax advantages, including deferring distribution taxes by the total cost basis. So if you hold them and sell them, eventually you will pay taxes. But that's where if you hold these and you pass them on to heirs, at least as of right now, and again, do more research on this, when you pass it on to your heirs, the cost basis resets to the price that they get the shares at, not the price that you bought it at. They've also got this article out that's free. That's uh, a list, a 2022 list of their MLP stocks. Um, they've got all 43 of them ranked and analyzed, right? I'm gonna talk about the top five and my reason for owning these top five. I'm not an expert in MLPs, uh, I really respect the way that Simply Safe Dividend has their dividend safety ratings. They have a good track record. Okay, and again, look up this article and dive deeper into it and read the whole thing. I'm just going to tell you the name and, and tell you a little bit about each stock. Number one is Enterprise Product Partners. It's in, uh, obviously, energy and then oil and gas pipelines. 7.6% dividend yield as of 11.22. Dividend safety score of SAFE and uninterrupted dividend streak of 23 years. One of America's largest providers of midstream services, enterprises operations span everything from gathering and processing to transportation and storage for natural gas, liquids, natural gas, crude oil, refined products, and petrochemicals. And once I get through you know, these five descriptions, I'm gonna show you the all-time performance of these stocks and how I'm gonna allocate them to my own portfolio. Number two, Magella, Magellan Midstream Partners, 7.9% yield safe dividend safety score, 20 years of uninterrupted dividends, and they own the longest refined products pipeline system in America. It's essential infrastructure that helps move refined petroleum products such as gasoline from refineries towards gas stations, truck stops, and other end users. Crude oil pipelines involved primarily in long haul transportation for energy part, uh, producers account for one third of the firm's profits too. Again, there's more information in this article for you to read. Number three, Chenier Energy Partners, 5.2% dividend, borderline safe, so a little bit riskier dividend score there, 14 years of uh, dividend streak, and it owns the Sabine, probably said that wrong, pass, Sabine, Sabine, whatever, uh, pass, liquefied natural gas terminal located in Louisiana. LNG produced by uh, the MLP's infrastructure gets shipped globally and is then turned back into natural gas before moving via pipelines to homes and businesses to be used as an energy source. Number four, Plans All-American Pipeline. Ticker is PAA. I'll tell you the tickers of the other ones in just a second. 7% dividend yield, borderline safe, one year uninterrupted dividend streak. They own pipelines, terminals, storage facilities, and gathering assets across all major U.S. oil basins, but the Permian America's largest and most productive oil basin drives around half of Plains cash flow. Okay, number five, Cross America Partners. 10.5% dividend yield, borderline safe, three years on interrupted dividend streak. They distribute over 1 billion gallons of motor fuel annually to more than 1,700 gas stations and other locations. The small cap MLP stock also drives income from leasing convenience stores to tenants and operating some of its own retail locations. Now we're gonna look at kind of the, the current valuation, see if they look overvalued or undervalued and the all-time performance or at least 20 year performance. So Enterprise Product Partners, EPD, if you look over the last 20 years, up 10.4% versus S&P 500, up 8.9. They paid 37, this is on a $10,000 investment, they paid 37,500 in dividends. And then the you've also gotten appreciation of about twenty thousand dollars for a total growth of fifty nine thousand uh, dollars 
uh, again, starting with $10,000 in 2004. If you wanna look at the valuation on an operating cash flow basis, then you can see here, it's currently at a price operating cash flow of seven, has traditionally traded up around 10. Based on its historical average, it's looking undervalued right now. Again, just based on its historical average. All right, Magellan Midstream Partners, MMP. Since 2002, it's up 14.75% compound annual growth rate versus, again, 8% from the S&P 500. Get, you got paid on a $10,000 initial investment. You have made $105,000 in dividends over that time for and then total growth of $177,000. Just fantastic. If we look at it on a price to operating cash flow basis, again, black line here below its average over the last since uh, since 2002, um, which its, its average has been right around 11. Chenier Energy Partners, CQP, up since 2007, 16.3% compound annual growth rate versus 8.79 from the S&P 500. Starting with a $10,000 investment, you've made $36,000 in dividends and then total growth dividends plus stock price appreciation, $107,000. Okay, if we look at this since 2015, its normal price operating cash flow has been 10.7. Uh, and it's currently trading at about 8.2. So currently looking a bit undervalued, not as much as the other two, at least according to operating cash flow. Plains All-American, PAA. This is probably, I think, the worst performing one since 2002. It's up 6.81% per year versus the S&P 500, which is beating it 7.9%. $56,000 in dividends, total growth of 39000 so that means the share price is actually down since 2002. Yeah, and it looks like, so it started at around 13, it's currently at about 12, but it was up all the way to $56 in 2014. So this thing is trading way, way down. And it does look like, you know, they've had some, they've struggled with some operating cash flow growth. Analysts are expecting negative operating cash flow growth next year, but then back to positive in 2024. So this one does look a little bit riskier than the others, perhaps. Number four, Cross America Partners. Since uh, 2012, it's up at about a 9.75% compound annual growth rate versus the S&P 500 at 13%. Gotten paid 16,000 in dividends uh, for total growth of 25,000. So stock is up a little bit. It's normal price operating cash flow is 12, trading down to 4.98. Again, a lot of these have been hit really hard in this rising interest rate environment because it makes MLPs not as attractive. All right, the other thing I do here is I share my portfolio transparently. Um, started this portfolio on February 15, 2022. We have put in a total of 133,000. We're at 110,800, so we're down 22,000. So been a tough year, right? Uh, today looks like we're down 0.28%. If you've been following me, you know that I've only had this broken down um, into basically one slice and it was just like everything growth, right? So this is how I'm adjusting things moving forward. I'm not selling any of these, but I've created, I've broken my cloud and SaaS stuff into additional slices. And now this bucket or pie or whatever it is, is just the cloud and SaaS stocks. Snowflake, CrowdStrike, Datadog, GitLab, Cloudflare, Bill.com, and Mongo Database. So the target for that is gonna be 25% of the portfolio. That's how much money uh, will be added to it. I'm not gonna sell anything because it's currently at 39%. I still think these are undervalued, but I don't wanna just keep piling money into them. If they start to outperform, then they're gonna, it, it'll do amazing. Uh, I wanna start to add money to other things. So new money is gonna go to balance out these new categories. The next category is advertising and e-commerce. It's currently at 35%, which we're gonna bring down to 25%, again, over time by adding to the other categories. So that is Meta, Shopify, Mercado Libre and Google, which I don't own yet, but as I put money in, this will get built up. And so the larger two positions in this bucket will be Google and Meta, and then Shopify or Mercado Libre will be 20% of this bucket, right? And so when you look at that, that means it's gonna be 20% of the 25% of the portfolio. And so 5% of the portfolio will be dedicated to those companies, if that makes sense. And then I've got EV space and semiconductors at 25%. This is probably the riskiest category just because I've got Rocket Lab, Tesla, and Taiwan Semi. I've got Rocket Lab at 25% of this bucket, Tesla at 25, and then Taiwan Semi at 50. And so again, for Taiwan Semi, it is 50% of 25% of the portfolio portfolio, which means it's going to be 12.5% of the portfolio. That's how those buckets work out. And then what I've done is I've added this 25% bucket, which will be these high dividend MLPs, um, each of them just at equal amounts, 20% of the bucket, Chenier, Cross America, Enterprise, Magellan, and Plan Plains All-American. All right. So again, if you're enjoying this journey, just 
you know, like the videos that helps more people find us and subscribe to the channel so you can follow along. And let me know down in the comments if there's other MLPs I should look at or is there a warning I need about any of these that I maybe missed over that I should reconsider. Uh, let me know down in the comments.